it's Saturday right now. I'm going to my dad's. So I actually got dressed and did makeup again. So I thought I'd do an outfit. Uh, little showing. Um, you will see my messy apartment and my crooked uh, frames uh, and I just don't have the energy to like climb and fix that so they have been like that for months um, so let's uh, go through my outfit I'm wearing this like uh, blondie tee I wanted another band shirt and so I was just like typing on like all the bands I like and I found this one and I like how it's very soft and has this sort of like washed out grey colour and it's big and baggy which is nice when it's about 20 degrees and to that I have a pair of like uh, very Harry from Catherine Collats. Um, I don't know what you would call this. Um, like really, like style of it. But yeah, it has a um, waistband that is like soft, which I also like. Uh, and I have this kind of style in maybe four pairs and like two three other ones that are like full length and like one that's velvet and two that are patterned and yeah they're just really comfy and it's good when you have fibromyalgia and can't have stuff that are too too tight if you could hear that that was my cat and I also did actual makeup because I was watching this um, video on Instagram last night and I was talking about this new style. Can you see her? <laughs> she wants food. Uh, that was called like latte makeup. And it was basically like this blended out brown stuff and and I thought it looked kind of cool and summery and so I did a little, little smoky eyeliner to that it's not great because I'm not great at makeup but yeah it was something I have a lot of necklaces on these two are second hand these are this one is just a very pretty shame uh, with the pattern. This is a beaded one. This is a silver chain. This is the new pendant. And this is a coin pendant. That was my mother's with like a four leaf clover. Um, on the back it says luck and has like a star in it and pretty eye and I should clean it but yeah. And also when it comes to appearance, I did a bit of bleaching on my hair last night. No, I did it during the day. Like here, as you can see, um, underneath. And I've been thinking about doing it for a long while. And the turnout wasn't great because I had dyed it darker. Because I had it blonde and like color on the ends before, so I dyed it darker so it could be like consistent color, so it didn't like turn out great. But I would just get new dye and do it again in a week or something. So, yeah, that's my look for today. I'm getting tired from standing up. I'm thinking of like 
let's just stop filming for a moment. Uh, so I feel like I have this professional setup right now because I actually have uh, my DSLR camera and uh, like this big stand for it. So yeah, hopefully the quality is better. But what I was going to say is I am thinking about walking to my dad's. It's about a kilometer away and usually if I take it very slowly with a lot of breaks, maybe sitting down and focusing on my breathing so I'm not breathing too shallowly and stuff. I can usually walk there uh, and some of the park is quite pretty uh, and it will be okay and then I will just take the bus home and it's basically like three bus stops so that was one of the two reasons why I chose this flat that it was close to someone I know and that I have the yard for my flowers and the plants. So yeah, um, let's uh, show you my, what is it called? My brain today, it's like splints. That is one of the names, I think, for my joints. Um, so, here I have my stuff. This is for my knees. And it's very, like, focused around the knee area. Because my kneecap uh, subluxes, or it used to mainly in the past, is better and it has this hard stuff also on the side of the knee so I can't hyperextend the knee. It's quite good but as for a lot of women and non-binary people born as women, I can't remember the way you phrase that, um, and trans men. Um, the problem is that they were tested when they were made uh, on men. So they will fit quite good on men and then on women they will sort of fall down a bit during the, during the day. So you have to pull it up and make sure it's like focused on the knee. So Basically during the day I would just have to go around and like pull it up and this is the one I use the most and it's for the ankle which is like my most problematic joint I would say except for my jaw and just pull it around and then like so and it has like a cardboard thing cardboard that's not what it's called uh, cardboard is what it's called in english like um yeah it basically like you probably understand it uh so it like fits quite tightly around the ankle and it feels great. I found found that my uh, fibromyalgia pain is quite a lot better in those places when I have these on. And it's interesting because I haven't heard anyone talk about that, both like fibro patients on like Instagram or medical people. And the third one is a new one that I haven't used yet, and it's for the wrist. 
and you just put it on like this. And so I can't like bend it too much so I can keep it quite straight and I meant to use it when I start doing physio more and I should probably use it when I'm like doing the dishes especially like heavy stuff like pans and pots because I the thing I mentioned and um, when I was getting this stuff is that I carry a lot of stuff like this which means that you're not carrying it with your uh, muscles you're carrying it with like your tendons and stuff which will get overstretched if I'm understanding this correctly and I need to start carrying stuff more better and the thing is when I start doing physio using this then I can start training the muscle and it will hopefully be like a muscle memory kind of thing and uh, the problem is uh, just that these two are really comfortable I could probably sleep in this but this is quite hard it's leather and then it's like this so with the fiber and the sense of the skin thing Lodinia, I think it's called. It's quite hard to put on. I haven't used it really yet. I'm like trying to sensitize myself to using it. But yeah, I don't love it. But I think it's a good thing. I There is another kind of uh, type of these that I need. And it's for my specific one of my finger joints, this finger, uh, that I can hyperextend too much and like if I'm like pressing stuff or this one specific memory I have was like going to fancy pizza, pizza restaurant and like cutting it and it was quite tough and like I had so much pain in the uh, finger afterwards because like it was like pressing too much so yeah I have had those mesh mes measured and I basically just need to go to basically just need to order it or go to a specific shop, shop that I've been recommended um, I was also watching this video, can't remember if it was a Swedish or English one. Uh, I think it was Swedish and it was talking about like finger pain, hand pain while writing by hand, which is something that I love and used to do a lot. I have so many journals from the past, basically from the age of, I'd say like, 13 to 25 written by hand and like filled with lots of stuff memories, article clippings, pictures, like everything uh, and I have a lot of difficulty doing that right now I've for the last few years I've done it mostly on computer which feels like I'm not putting as much thought into it. Um, this is a tangent, but uh, anyhow, she was talking about uh, like how you could like uh, put your pen pen in a different way, like between these two fingers. And I tried that last night and found no, not really much. Uh, difference when it came to pain I could write like three lines and then I got, got like cramping and pain here uh, instead of two lines on the paper 
and but anyway, anyway, she was showing that this like silver splint uh, thing for the fingers that you put. I think uh, it was connected anyhow, and it was for the little finger and the middle finger. I think I will try and find this so I can sh show it. Uh, and it basically held your fingers in this specific way. I think it must have worked like that. Which uh, she was talking about how it made the uh, little finger not sublux. So I don't know if my finger does that, but yeah, a lot of pain. So yeah, um, I didn't plan to show all of this, but yeah. So yeah, I will put these on and I will go to my dad's. And Again, it's Sunday now. I'm really quite tired after yesterday and the day before. Uh, I did walk to my dad yesterday and it became quite a long day. We played. I made lasagna, which takes a long time. It became really great though, but long time and a bit of work and then we played like this quiz game for a good few hours and I came home like quarter to twelve which I usually start my like evening routine at like turning down all, all the lights and stuff and making sure I'm in my pyjamas and like all that around 9 although I might not like if I have a, like a great burst I might not go to bed early to sleep but yeah anyhow and the day before is the day of course I died my hair which is a bit of work and I also made bread and it was stupid and I made the both, both at the same time and yeah so that was stupid and but anyhow uh, when it comes to stupid things I also I also, the other night, I also was writing on this essay uh, and I did it quite late and I wrote another airplane. I wrote like three and a half pages worth, so I had like over six and I was so yeah, it felt really good because it has to be like 15 pages, which is quite a lot. And then I forgot to save, which is why I shouldn't be allowed to write late with ADHD and like memory issues. Because obviously that morning when I was turning the computer on, it decided that it needed to update and when I turned on, I could like refound the other uh, documents that I haven't hadn't saved like my journal entries, but not the essay. So I lost those three pages. <sighs> And I basically haven't been able to like go back to it. But anyway, I thought I'd do it. And I haven't been like going through to uh, like works that I need to find quotes for. So I thought I'll 
the reason I had that like burst of inspiration was that I fi finally had found this uh, work online again and that was quite important for this one and it it was it's basically like a university thesis and it's on a Swedish poet called Katarina Fösslingsson and I like quite a bit of her older poetry um, so yeah but well, there is a bit of story relating to her because she is married to this man called Jean-Claude Arnaud and she was in the Swedish Academy that chooses the that is my cat making the noises again uh, and the helicopter again and so they chose she's the Nobel Prize and so the controversy was that she on one part had leaked who were going to be the winners for her husband and uh, I don't know he had this literary culture like place in Stockholm where a lot of people like could perform both I think musically and also like with their creative writing both like poetry and like more long form and it was a very very influential part he had a lot of power and so um, news broke that he had sexually abused girls and said that if they went to the police and other stuff they would never be published again because that was the kind of uh, power he had and so I thought I'd show because um, this was the journalist who found this out her name is Matilda Gustafsson and I think it was for Dagens Nyheter and this book is called Klubben, the club and and it's no it's a bus variation and it's and in this she interviewed used these girls and what they've been um, subjected to and so I haven't actually read this because I, I read a lot of it a lot around this I read the, like the court papers like the so it went to court and now that I'm thinking about it, I can't actually remember what the sentence was. Was he actually found guilty? Let's find that together. Sean uh, Claude. No, not Van Damme. I don't know. <clears throat> he was sentenced to two cases of rape uh, on the highest instance of like the court system in Sweden. And yeah, I forget forgotten about it despite the fact that I like I said read the read it but like it was 
over six years ago, so I think like she, her article was published in newspaper, and just a couple of days later, the Weinstein like stuff came out. So yeah, it was during the Me Too movement. Now I'm getting that shells writing about it, and after that, they fled to France. He was from French <laughs> and this is a book she wrote. Uh, it's called Koa K and um, it's about them fleeing as she yes. they thought of it as to France after persecution and betrayal and like back talking. And as we just read, he was sentenced. So can it be seen as that, really? Um, anyhow, um, and she wrote about it and how she thought that basically like the whole literary scene in Sweden was coming after them and then newspapers and like this new young group of people were like trying to take over the Swedish uh, Swedish Academy so there's a lot of like paranoia in this book which uh, makes it quite interesting to read and like her poetry there's a lot of like beautiful parts of like uh, made marks on it and stuff and like references to Simone Weil uh, and yeah so this paper this like uh, university uh, my brain is dying This university thesis is about one of her poetry collections and on how she uses language and myth and relating to uh, the subject called language skepticism, which is what basically my um, essay is about. And I was very relieved to found this because I really wanted to write about her poetry in in it. So that is one, and the other is a um, academic article on language skepticism, and it relates in uh, one part to like uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein this uh, philosopher I love um, but also like a lot of stuff I didn't know which is always fun uh, another thing I will write about in my essay is a play um, by Peter Handke called Kaspar um, and no, it's a helicopter. Uh, about Kasper Hauser, who was a real person, I think. And I was at this like science um, newspaper, not newspaper, magazine. I was an apprentice there, like, this was autumn before I got sick, so almost four years ago, yeah, and uh, because it was during the autumn, it was during the time where they announced the Nobel Prizes, and that was the time they announced uh, Alex, uh, Olga Tokarczuk, I have I written her name totally wrong here, uh, uh, and Peter Hanke because they didn't 
the year before because of the whole controversy stuff. Um, and so I actually got to go to the uh, the it's uh, an old bank in Gemmastan, the old town in Stockholm. Which, if you are here, go there. It's like so beautiful, and it's like from it's the oldest part of Stockholm. But anyhow, and I got to see uh, them announce these two winners, and then wrote right like was it four pages about them and so I I found like relating to both of them and a scientist you know like a, a academic basically writing uh, um, in literature in regards to, to Kajchuk and Handke and when it uh, was about Kantke, he was uh, he, he had um, written a book, I think, or was it a chapter? I can't remember. On his play, and uh, he in, interpreted it as language as a, a violence act. Is it called that in English? Uh, basically, translates into that. Yeah. Let's shake this out as well. Mm. Violence Act. Yeah, probably because it's called Speech Act in English. And that's the traditional way you look at it in philosophy, and um, um, so uh, he, this character comes from nowhere and basically can't speak except for a few sentences, and yeah, that I will write about as well. Uh, language as a violence act, yeah. See, my brain is just like clouds today, I can't think clearly at all. <clears throat> so I was going to show you like doing a bit of like actual like writing but my brain is basically like melting on the floor right now so I am going to take a break I'm going to feed my cat because it's six o'clock and that's when she gets her dinner I'm going to eat a bit of dark chocolate to like Energize my mind. I should drink some water. Um, is there anything else? <clears throat> if there is, I will get back to you. Thank you for now.
hi let's just try taking another outfit video i realized the last one was not great because you couldn't see the low half but i'm going to my dad's again because i forgot some stuff last time that i was supposed to bring with me it's monday today so what I'm wearing is a package I got that I ordered from an online secondhand shop. So this is a very creased uh, black like strappy top that I love. It's it's quite too much big, too too much too big, but like I don't really care because I'm going to wear it in the summertime where it, when it's hot and I like the is this broderie on glass? I can't really remember it's like this kind of pattern and it's flowers and you can see it's like the uh, the, the the shape underneath it underneath is the shape from the flowers and to that I'm wearing a pair of biker shorts which is something that I, that I didn't own and that I needed for a couple of like mid thigh dresses that are very like big and baggy and when it's blowing I live on a hill so it's blowing a lot and they just like do the sort of Marilyn Monroe thing and yeah, I want to have something underneath and I don't think you will be able to show it but they're sort of ribbed in a, uh, an interesting way and so I'm wearing my necklaces again I like this combination I'm wearing a little anklet, uh, anklet thing and I think I'm always wearing my Fitbit and I'm going to wear my like sneakers to it because it's I don't know if it's raining or if it's like going to rain so I'm going to put a cardigan over it. Let's go and get it. No, I'm probably going to wear my jean jacket over because uh, it's nicer for like weather protection. Uh, so yeah, and uh, so sneakers on the feet, like Nike, very good for my EDS feet, and a jean jacket on top, and, uh, and a mm -hmm. small handbag, and a uh, fjällräven ryggsäck backpack. Yeah, that's it. Past eight, and I didn't fix my medicines yesterday, which I tried to do because it's horrible and it usually makes me miss uh, <coughs> some miss my medication in some way on Monday which I did on the most difficult time, which is remembering my pain medication around dinner, well, five or six. And I did that. And mostly that was because I was so tired by then. And, and then I listened to an audiobook by like half past five, and then I fell asleep, so yeah. So I thought I'd do it now. I have these as my boxes. I don't know what the word is in English actually at all. This is the thing that dispenses of my medicine. I think it was like a old box for something. 
This is my tiny couch. So. <clears throat> That's the Tuesday. Mm. I hate doing this like it's unbelievable. And I also don't think I have all my medication at the moment. I, like, it seems like I have too many of my pain medications to go around for the whole week as well. <coughs> so, so I will need to go and get more. This is for my hypothyroid hypothyroidism. Is that what it's called? There's one already. Six. Exactly the right number. Okay, this is my iron vitamins. I don't have any for being a vegetarian at the moment. I need to pick that up as well. And these ones are awful. They weigh, they are way too big. And I hate them. But yeah, uh, they have iron and vitamin C which uh, makes it easy for the for the body to absorb the iron, which we like, because it's easy to get to, for your body to not get enough iron as a vegetarian. And I found that my body does that, does that especially. So yeah. Uh, these are my mood type stabilizers, and I need three of those every evening. They can cause some uh, fatigue, so I take them in the evening. I've really noticed that. Yeah. And so I would also put in my and digepressants uh, but those are out and I need to pick up more uh, I will go and get my phone because because uh, it's a uh, new New type of antidepressants is not the usual like SS, SSRI or S, uh, SNR, SNRI. I tried all of the old ones and because I have bipolar disorder I found that they didn't really work. And I know in Sweden you have to have tried one or two other medications in order to get this one. Uh, but because it's a newer one, it doesn't have as much um, uh, side effects, which we like. And I, it was the, it's the only antidepressant I probably tried five or six different ones that I had no side effects on. Fortio, fortio, fortio exetin, fortio exetin. So like, if you have, okay. I, uh, <laughs> so if you have antidepressant, and um, I will just bring it up with your doctor. Let's continue this help. So this 
um, the pain, pain medication that I'm on, uh, it was the pain, like, doctor uh, at the pain rehabilitation program I was in during spring health, if I want to try a type of medication that I had wanted to try for a long time, uh, gabapentin. If you have like chronic pain, you probably know about it. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I really want to try it. The only issue is you need to take it three times a day. And yeah, that is the issue. And I am now at quite a high dose because I haven't actually had any effect for the fibromyalgia pain, sadly which I had hoped for. Um, so that sucks. I... Yeah, I had really high hopes for it. I have though um, restless legs. Because like, why only have one type of pain, right? Uh, so I have that, I have it quite quite badly, yeah, or I used to, uh, it caused me like sleeplessness quite bad and a lot of pain, like even sitting down for uh, any periods of time made it horrible, but uh, these help. This help for it, and that I was quite excited about it. So if this doctor says that, okay, this doesn't work for your fibromyalgia pain, I will just go to my health clinic and say I want to be on a lower dose of this for my restless leg because I know it works, and it is a medication which is used for it. I have checked the medical sites. I usually go to the sites for doctors to check things like that out. And so this was my mom's medical like thing for medicines. And I need the bigger one because these tablets are quite big and as I needed to get a bigger high dose. I needed bigger box uh, slots in the boxes. So every Tuesday I increase the dose I have. Yes, tomorrow is the. I after tomorrow I have one more dose to increase it with. Okay. So I'm not super optimistic. Uh, I know there is Pregabaldine, tri tri I don't know how you pronounce it in English, which is a medication that was developed after this one. And I hope I can try that one out instead. So yeah, I would also like to get a medication for those times when your pain is awful. That would be helpful. But yeah, my pain clinic, like I said, my doctor hasn't done anything besides giving me like tests. I need my allergy medicine as well. I'm gonna get the bounce, but I will just like put out. Yeah, so I, I have allergies as well. I have it for like pollen, so what right, like right now, I have it for ironically cats. 
I used to volunteer at the cat center and especially at some cats it was so bad and it was really funny because there was a lot of us girls who were allergic to cats who volunteered there um, and I'm, I had this like random attacks of allergies Hold on, I will get my pits Now I can't remember what I was talking about, but yeah. Um, yeah, I have this like random attacks of allergies where like my lips can swell, like my lids, I get this like uh, rashes and uh, what is it called? Dicartia? Is that what it's called? Like big like itching like like you get like mosquito bite, bites similar to those and I can also get it from like heat or cold or like one time I came back and had been out at the theater I think and I had gotten it from like my uh, underwear pressing on my skin so yeah and I don't know where I get it from it's like it doesn't make any sense so I uh, take those every day in the summertime uh, and when I need to otherwise when my body starts starts itching which I found out is uh, A weird fibromyalgia symptom as well but like it's more than just itching you start getting like these rashes and stuff but so the medicine I need to get is more from the like to get out is more pain medicine I need to get my pills because I get really 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 awful cramps it might be endometriosis i don't know my i went to the gynecologist uh, and she was like let's try you out on pills and i was like yeah if it helps with my pain and it sort of does but like Thinking about it now, years later, I'm like, do I want to be on this for years and years? Probably not. And like, so that's difficult. So I need to get that as well. And I need to get my antidepressants and I need to get my vitamins, vegetarian. Right, vitamins. So yeah, it's not as awful when I don't have every type of medicine I actually need.